All artists step into the game to be the best that ever did it, or at least the best version of themselves. This takes confidence in yourself, a belief in your gifts and talents, and the ability to stand in your spotlight. The problem is many creatives are fearful of that spotlight, and this is kind of what allows them not to succeed. However, being honest with yourself will allow you to get over the hump that's currently in your way right now. So here are my top 10 struggles that artists deal with based on my management career and my coaching career currently right now coming up right here on the music money makeover show hey everybody welcome back to the music money makeover show my name is casey graham let's hop right in for starters we got to talk about what is possible most artists don't believe that making it is possible and it is sometimes creatives eyes are bigger than their appetite and usually when they begin to see just how hard the road will be, they start believing that it isn't possible. This is part of the reason why many believe that making it is impossible and you've got to do certain things to be successful. However, this is only a half truth if you know what I'm talking about here, you catch my drift. But making it is totally possible, it's all in your mindset. And I find that a lot of artists sometimes don't have their mindsets equipped or ready to take on the difficult tasks that lie in front of them in the road ahead. Number two is many want to own their masters but don't know how to promote them. Now a lot of artists want to own their masters but they don't know what to do with them from their position. So if you own your masters, your job is to promote them, but many don't know the first thing about promoting the music. They only know how to promote themselves. Music promotion versus promoting yourselves is a huge difference. Big difference here. On top of many not knowing how to promote their masters or the music, they, it was really called exploitation. They don't know how to exploit the masters, which means they're not getting these records licensed. They're not getting covers done on their records. And there's so many things that has to be done when you own your masters and you, it, it, all the way down to cataloging them the right way. So there are a lot of protocols that must be in place when you own intellectual property and a lot of artists don't know what to do with this stuff. Okay, now, number three is many don't create dope music. Many artists don't create dope music because they are in their own world. Sometimes making music for the sake of fun and expression is good for the soul. However, a lot want to have that same process and put a dollar amount behind it. And in order to do that, the music must be tried and tested and vetted critically before you attempt to enter the free market and sell. That's the thing. So a lot of people want to say, all right, man, I'm making this music. I'm having fun. We're going to take it. We're going to put it out. And you're just making it and you're having fun with it. It's not like your friends or peers say, yo, this is fire. This is dope. Right. And even if your friends did say this is dope because y'all were dancing along with it together, it still has to go through public scrutiny. I don't want to jump the gun here, but most expressive introspective music makes it because it was created in the public's proving ground and not in private comfort. Meaning like you went to open mics and tried it or you tried it out on social media to see what people liked and what they didn't like. So when you express yourself in a public space, you've got something to say to the world. And when you express yourself in a private space, you've got something to get off your chest. Big difference. Many are stuck in a private space and they think that the music that they create in the private space will be good enough to stand up to the cruel reality of the public. Okay? Now, they're afraid of the public's opinion. We're right in line here. Because many artists create in a private space, they tend to stay there. And I've learned this. These artists are afraid of public opinion because in their hearts, they weren't really creating music for the public. They weren't. And it was really for them to heal or find themselves. So when the public all of a sudden has to say, man, that song sucks, or oh, you singing flat, or you sharp, or I don't like that song and all this stuff. It's like, oh, I didn't know. I was just, just getting this stuff off my chest. I'm just healing. And you take that music that you hold dear to you and you put it in that public space. A lot of artists are afraid to do that, to make that one action to take it from the studio and to put it in the public space, right? And this is why a lot of music doesn't come out. Now, they don't study the greats enough. A lot of artists don't go to concerts to study the greats that came before them or the current leaders of the day. And if you don't study, you can't pick up on pointers to innovate upon, all right? This is called research and development or market research, if you will. And it is required of any business to grow. So I see a lot of artists who, do, who really only listen to a few artists. They've never seen them live or never even took time to watch their concert footage to learn from, them, learn from them and learn the tactics and things that they do to make what they do work so that they can apply that to themselves. You got to study what's going on out here. Okay. Now, a lot of people or a lot of artists want to promote without a place to capture their fans. Now we're going into the marketing side here. 
Promotion is great. Everybody's gung ho about it. And capturing attention is great. But what's attention without a means to measure it? Speak back to it. Make money from it and increase your connections from it. You see what I'm saying? If fame is your only goal, it will be short lived. Nobody enters this game to have a short run. So capturing the information of your fans to stay in contact with them should be your M.O. at all times. Contacts are golden. Contacts are your leads, which ultimately makes you money. Now, many are afraid to sell themselves, and you know I've said this before on the channel. You can't successfully sell what you don't believe in unless you're a con man. Though many hit artists are con men, they don't really want to be. So if you don't believe in yourself wholeheartedly, you won't successfully sell yourself. Your message, your music, your mission, your imagery, or your ideals to the public. I think that one's kind of self-explanatory. Also, a lot of artists are afraid to be open and unapologetic. Because artists are afraid to sell themselves, they can't be unapologetic. Unapologetic artists are the artists that became legends beyond their music. It's what they stand for that move the world and not just the crowd, okay? They weren't afraid to say what they had to say, and unapologetic artists stand on business when it comes to worldly progress. Even if, let's say, they're not at all, all the charity functions, it's just what they say moves the world forward because they're not afraid to say it. So they're afraid of the spotlight that they've created for themselves. A lot of artists will do well promoting themselves, but as soon as their spotlight gets bigger than them so they can actually stand in it, they run away from it. They are not ready to be illuminated for the world to see. And you don't have to be a major artist for this to happen. I've seen it happen on many levels. So standing in the light is not easy and it's the truth. OK, um, you know, I mean, yo, the spotlight is there. People are going to, you know, siphon your energy, if you will. People are going to plug into you because you are their leader. You're helping them get through their rough times and tough times. And you may say, well, who's going to help me get through my rough and tough times? But you'll find those people that help you get through. But in the meantime, you're doing a service for the public. So you might as well stand in that spotlight and don't be afraid of it. Right. You had the talent to get there. You desire to be there. Stand in it. Now, many do not practice beyond the studio. Many artists are bedroom studio artists or studio rats. They don't want to take their career beyond that. OK, and usually when I determine this characteristic about an artist, I tell them to stick to writing for others or producing for others, because that's really the skill that you're trying to hone in on. You just don't know it yet. And it's the truth. It's the God honest truth. So why I say all this stuff about artists? Because I stand on the truth and not many people will tell you the truth. You may be hurt by it, but you'll eventually respect it. Plus, all of this information has been gathered over years of research, so I'm not just, you know, shooting from the hip here. This is some real stuff that I've learned and I've averaged over time. So what would you work on first? I would start going to concerts and studying the greats because this is going to give your vision that you have for yourself a little bit more definition on what is possible to be done in a grand setting. And then I would test my music in public more than I'm currently doing so I can get a better gauge on expressing myself better musically so that what I'm saying is heard well or received well rather and ultimately making me a craftsman of music and the game. I believe that testing your music publicly, whether it be at open mics and bars and karaoke nights or whatever, or testing yeah, karaoke nights, you can test your skills. You can't really test your music, right? Um, open mics, you can test your music. And you're looking for how the crowd responds to you, how you step on stage, your style of dress. All this stuff builds confidence in who you are trying to present yourself as or your character that you're trying to present yourself as. So those are the things I would work on first. How would you help an artist work on fear? The best way to work on fear is to face it at least twice. Once so you know that you can do whatever it is. And the second time you can confirm that you are capable or aren't capable of consistently going up against the thing that makes you afraid. Eventually it becomes second nature or at least the butterflies get quelled. But that spotlight, again, is no joke. OK, and you have to bear that cross and walk with it. You notice most of the show is strictly based on fear. It's something that a lot of artists need to work out and get over bit by bit, piece by piece, and break it down as fast as you can. Because with the tools that we have at play, if your music is great, you won't, and, and you start to create great content for it, you won't really have a lot of time to start breaking down those fear barriers before the public is going to request that you step out in front of it and showcase your talents, if you will. All of this is great. But you know how I am, just like this guy work, walking on the stairs right here. He's got a foundation to step on, and you're going to need one too. 
So if you're an artist, a producer, singer, songwriter, or new music business exec who needs to build a record or publishing company or both or separate in 60 days flat without any red flags, without any missing information and looking all over the internet for the how to's, I got you covered. I built something called a 60 day record label course, and this will allow you to build a strong LLC company foundation for your record and publishing company. And you'll learn how to play the game via contract so you're not lost out here in the sauce and you can navigate through this industry that's becoming more tech, AI focused, and independent focused. And on top of that, you'll be able to collect all of your royalties, international and domestic, record and publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15% of your money. All right, all the stuff you see in the bottom right hand corner is included in the course. Sounds like a good deal. To me, I would click the link below. But if this is your first time watching the, the channel, grab 10 major steps to increase your record labels profits. A free split sheet is included with the download. Now, if you work on yourself and craft in neglected areas, you'll begin to see a change in your game, steps and strides, and people will be going to see you for the star you are and respect you for your new growth. But if you don't put in the work, obviously you will not go anywhere and eventually your music career desires will begin to fade away because if you don't utilize your gifts, you will lose your gifts and that spotlight will close up and somebody else will suck up that energy that the earth or the universe was trying to bring to you. So you wanna be right here, work on yourself, and craft in those neglected areas and those fearful areas as well. All right, music money makers. So if you were struggling with how to improve as an artist, you now have my top 10 data points that will allow you to actually succeed in this business, or at least that you can skate around and work on, you know what I mean? So you can be a better artist for the public and the world to receive. All right, so if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, jump into the 60 day record label course right beneath this video. All right, book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, grab the free stuff right down below, hit the like button below, and I will see you next time. Peace.